So to start off, we'll talk about the Jeep. Um, I don't know if this is a just an issue of ours, but even on flat ground, I found that ours pull to the side, to one side especially. Um, so it may not be an issue for every Jeep, but for ours it was. And with any kind of an incline, it was a little bit difficult to push, especially with my big guy in there, five years old. So on inclines, not the best, um, but for smaller kids, it may be just fine. I would recommend this most if you have small kids or if you're only going to use it indoors like at the shopping mall. As far as curb hopping goes, the Jeep has the benefit of having a, an axle back there that you can put your foot on to pop it up over a curb. Um, so that really does help lift up the front and then from there you just got to pull up on the back and you're up over the curb. As far as grass goes, I wasn't I wasn't loving it. It was it's like a small tank to be honest. So it's very roomy inside, but that also means that it can be very hard to move on, you know, a a surface like grass that has a lot of friction on it. I will say as a sidebar that since um our beach video came out with the Jeep, they did release sand tires. So you can purchase separately sand tires to add to your Jeep and that will hopefully make the push a lot better. I haven't tested it myself yet and I hope to one day. But uh, as far as far as the grass goes, I really didn't see a big difference or feel a big difference between pulling and pushing. Um, you know, it was just kind of difficult. I don't know if it was the tires that are so small on the front kind of digging in or just kind of the tires in general are not very all terrain, to be honest. Um, Might have been that. But yeah, if you're going to do a lot of grass, I would not recommend the Jeep as my first pick. I'm going to let you hear our experience going over the bumps. Hold on tight, guys. That was rough. My kids are champs. I appreciate their patience and their sacrifice for the channel. I mean, watch this. I'm going to give it another go. Ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, those little tires, they hit that bump and rejected the Jeep and every passenger inside. So I ended up having to lift it over every bump that we encountered here. It was pretty rough. I mean, the tires just kept turning in. I was worried about the kids. I was worried about the wagon. So, I mean, obviously, if you are going to invest in a Jeep, just take care when going on rough terrain like this. And if you're expecting all-terrain tires, because that is what they advertise as having all-terrain tires, I get frustrated with brands that say that sometimes because this is not even close. These are some of the worst tires we've ever encountered on any wagon. And so I would just say, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this for gravel, um, anywhere with tree roots sticking up. Obviously, as you can see, those little tires just turn in and give up. So we took another shot just to show you a little bit closer, kind of what's going on down there. Um, yeah, this is, this was a, a hard one. We had a little bit of experience with the Jeep since we had had it for a while when we filmed this. So thankfully we knew what to expect, but I would just hate for anyone to invest in this and think that it was going to work for them in an all-terrain setting when it really isn't and have a kid, you know, hit their head or something and, and just get, or get scared, you know, and not want to ride anymore because these wagons are an investment. So we wanted to give you guys a really good look at what this experience is like. I'm not even joking, you guys. This happens every time I use this, whether or not there are people in it. This happens with my kids in it. <sighs> we decided to do a little experimenting to see if it mattered how many kids were in the wagon or where they were positioned. So with no one in it, it got rejected. Look at those tires. Oh my goodness. So we tried both kids. Rejected. And we were hoping that with having more weight in the carriage that that would actually help. But our experiment showed that unfortunately it didn't make that much of a difference. We thought we'd give it one more go here with one more kid, just just one little kid, thinking maybe less weight would be helpful. Not quite. So that was kind of a bummer. We move on now to the fold and stow portion of the video for the Jeep. And we like to do this, you know, kind of in a complete way where you see what it would be like if you're out shopping and you have to take it all apart or fold it, you know, how it really is to fold it while you're out and about. Now, obviously, this is a little bit even faster than it would be because you don't have to take kids out, get kids situated in the car and that kind of thing. 
but hopefully this is helpful just so you can see you know how long it would take and how big the fold is how it looks so this is kind of like a a smaller size suv is a ford edge so the trunk isn't as spacious as a full size suv i wouldn't say um but you can see here we tried putting it in kind of long ways and it didn't actually work so we try and close the door and it got rejected so we ended up having to turn it sideways as you'll see here in just a second nope back up we go so turning it sideways you'll see does take up kind of a lot of space so for big trunks that don't have space as an issue this is great but for trunks that need a, something a little more compact i really wouldn't recommend the jeep My apologies if that sounded like a big Jeep trash fest, but I'm going to give it to you real every time, all the time. And unfortunately, the Jeep was one of our least favorite we've ever had. So we move on to the X4. Now, obviously, we don't have four kids in the X4. And that is kind of to give, hopefully, an even-keeled uh, comparison there. So just a, just a thought that if you do add four kids in, it'll be a different experience than I can give you. But... As far as having two kids in the X4, the push was better. We, we liked it better, although that tiny little tire looks very small in the front. Um, I did like the push better on this one than on the Jeep. I don't know if it's the tire quality might be what it is, um, but it was definitely a, a better pushing user experience for me, although it might be a little bit shorter. The, the handlebar is a little bit on the shorter side um, of all the wagons that we've had. On flat ground, the X4 push was actually pretty decent. Moving right along to the curb hopping portion, you'll see right here that there is an axle bar going across the back. However, it is one, blocked by the brake bar, two, incredibly thin and flimsy. So for me, the Jeep is probably the skinniest axle bar I would use for curb hopping. For this one, the way that it's designed, I would go around and do exactly what you see here. I would lift it with the other handle and then bring it around and uh, pull it, you know, pull it right up with the handlebar that you normally push from. When it came time to record this one, you could see he grabbed on tight. He knew exactly what was coming. I bonked my belly on the push bar, but I thought, why beat around the bush? This this is going to be rough. So I just went around to pull it on up, and I actually found it to be more difficult than I expected. The tires kept turning in. You might be able to see if you look closely, um, especially the, the left one up there on the front. That's a little hard to see. It really turned in really hard. So... I think any stroller wagon that has difficult, like small tires in the front that are this small are going to have a hard time getting up over bumps like these because they just get caught so easily. And something else that we noticed um, going over these bumps with the X4 is that it almost fell over. I don't know if it matters the kind of bump or, or what it is, but I'm no engineer. It almost toppled. So please do take extreme caution um, if you have a stroller wagon that is truly not all terrain. And of course, even if you have one that is, just take a, you know, a lot of caution going over terrain like this because it is pretty extreme for a walk out with little ones in a stroller wagon. Um, and I wouldn't, I would hate for anyone to, you know, have a kid fall out or something. So just, just take care. The push of the X4 on grass was slightly better than the Jeep. Uh, it was a little bit more leisurely. I was able and willing to do a little bit of maneuverability test, you know, kind of do a little bit of circle, a little bit of pushing, just to see, you know, how it felt and how, how easy it would be to get around um, with the two kids in the grass on the X4. And so, yes, the, the push here was a little bit better. Uh, moving over to the pull side of things, I much prefer this style of a pull handle. I think it's more comfortable. You're able to tailor it to the height that you want to hold it at. And it's just a little bit more natural feeling on the hand. You're not feeling like you're going to pull your shoulder out of its socket or something. So for me, this is a great asset to have this kind of a pull handle on there. And I just wish that it was kind of locking. Um, I wish that if you had it in the down position on the shortest height, that it would lock in place and it wouldn't just pull up out of its um, locked position. But other than that, I really do enjoy this handle. I enjoy the style. I think it's a great asset. When you're going across different terrains, having this kind of a pull function really helps. 
You are unfortunately going to miss out on the popping sounds that this canopy makes. If you want to hear those, go to my X4 review. They are hilarious. One of my favorite parts of the wagon. So we're sh again showing you, just like we did with the Jeep, you know, what it really is like when you are getting back to your car after you're shopping or whatever it may be, and you're going to fold it down. How quick and easy is this? What is this going to be a show? I'm going to show you just how quick and easy it is. I, I really like the fold on the X4 for a four-seater. It's incredibly compact, quick, easy buckle. Opening it up is even easier. So we're going to go ahead and show it to you here. The only downside is that this canopy is such a mess. It doesn't fold up into itself. It doesn't hold itself together in any way. It is seriously just like one of those tents that you try and fold down for your kids and then it just springs back in your face. That's what that canopy is, as you can see how he feels about it there. So other than the annoying canopy, the fold actually is pretty great. Love the X4 fold. From here... He's going to move the X4 from the Ford Edge trunk over to the Toyota Highlander so you can see what it looks like behind a third row. Now, I wasn't going to even bother trying this with the Jeep because the Jeep is one of the biggest folds we've ever had on the things that we've reviewed on the channel. So you can see here how for a four-seater, it is really quite compact. With that accordion fold, actually, they made it work. And the tires are, as you can see, pretty dang easy to take off, which is also a big asset. You can make that handlebar also fold down shorter um, as well, so that can be helpful to you. But you can see here just how nice that fold is, that it can actually be an option to go behind a third row. Now, of course, not all vehicles are the same. Your third row might be even tighter than the Highlander, if that's possible. But I like that this is an option. You may want to use a bungee cord or something to keep it back, you know, from flopping forward and potentially falling out when you get to your destination. However, my husband is kind of a MacGyver and just figured he'd stick a tire under there to keep it better balanced. So you can see, it's going to close up. There we go. That's a success. Feel free to stop and pause this and just look at this and take your time. I wanted to point out a couple of things that I thought were useful. So as far as car seat adapters, no wonderful model as of this time has the option for a car seat adapter. So right there, the Jeep has an advantage and it's included, which is great. Now, if you look at the retail price, there are some options, as example, for the Jeep. You can buy it at Target. You might have a gift card. You might have a registry there. You could get discount on that. That's pretty great. They both have three or five point optional harnesses. Now, the Jeep has a couple of different models available at different stores. Um, how, and then they also have accessories that you can purchase separately. The Wonderfold, as far as I can tell, doesn't have very many accessories available for purchase. You can hack it. You can, you know, add things onto it yourself. It's a little bit more difficult as the X4 has those soft sidewalls. So it's a little more difficult to add something like a break a snack pod to it. So just something to consider. Here you can get an idea of how they look side by side folded. On the left is the Pronto stroller. On the middle is the X4. And on the right is the Jeep stroller wagon. So you can see kind of the difference in size there. Definitely something to consider when you're purchasing, especially if you have a smaller vehicle. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. We really appreciate it. Be on the lookout for a giveaway. We've got something cooking for the future and we're really excited about it. So make sure you subscribe and have the bell turned on. Get our notifications because we are kicking it into high gear. Anthem videos coming soon doing comparison between the two, the four and the two seater. We appreciate you tuning in and we hope that we'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.